2020 at 5.03 p.m. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. All commissioners are present, as is General Manager Sullivan and Leif Goldberg from HCTV and Vicki Abair. Did I say that right? Uh, Abair. Abair, sorry. Uh, and Jessica Patterson and Brooke Dingledean are here. Is, so we know, the, so nobody else is, is here. No, and there's okay. nobody else waiting in the waiting room either. Okay. So uh, we have a quorum. Are there any modifications to the agenda? I have two, but I don't know if anyone else has any others. I'll just mention if those of you, uh, if anybody didn't get the email I sent this afternoon, I did shoot out uh, minutes that I forgot to add to the agenda. My apologies from the special meeting with the select board. So if you can get a scoot through them quickly, we might be able to get approve them. If not, then we'll do them next time. Okay. Um, anyone have anything else on the agenda? If not, I'll raise my two points. Yeah, I, I'd like to add a discussion of the email that Mike sent on 10 13 with the with uh eli's comments the comments about regarding uh let's see uh, one was about uh appointment or evaluation public officer employee and then attendance executive session because right that's really that's really an issue for the select board why why do we do you feel we need a discussion of, of how the select board wasn't following state procedure? We do follow it. No, okay. Uh, it's well, uh, this is a follow up on an email that Mike sent. So that and it was that's, that's uh, fine. That's fine. We can have a discussion. Well, we, we can add that. We'll add that at, at the other new business end. And, and um, it, it would, okay, it would apply to us too, since it's uh, since the, the language, the the Statute, statute section applies to- we'll, we'll discuss it, we'll discuss it when we get to it. Okay. Um, I would like to table the discussion of uh, qualifications for um, commissioners till a date that's closer to when terms may be expiring and, and, and it becomes relevant. Um, are there any objections to that? We've got plenty of other things to do. Um, and the other thing is, uh, Mike also sent out an email on uh, the audit question that came up at the uh, meeting with the select board. And I'd like to do a brief follow up on that if that's acceptable to people. Um, so we'll put that also with the other new business. Um, okay. Um, as, as modified as the agenda approved. No, so approved, so approved. So no objections. Hearing none, it is approved. Um, Leif, you're you're the only public member here. Do you have any uh, comments that you would like to make? Um, no, not in particular. I think there's an agenda item that I'll um, join in on later. Okay, that's okay. That's. I'd like to make one comment about the recording uh, that there's executive session at the end. So I guess, Mike, you'd need to be able to um, limit the ability for recording. <clears throat> okay. Or, or, or you, you need well, to log I, off. Or something. I, I won't record that part. I'll stop. Uh, well, leave, you'll have to leave the, the Zoom, actually. Exactly. Sure. You can so it's not, it's not, I'm sure you do it with the select board. It's not. <laughs> All the time. Yep. Nothing personal. <laughs> no worries. It's, um, Okay, uh, so um, we have Vicki Abair here from VLCT. Uh, at our last meeting, there was some discussion of insurance and what sort of liability coverage uh, the commissioners had, and Vicki is here. Thank Hello. You. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Jessica sent me uh, some questions that you had uh, relating to your coverage. So I figured I'd go over those and I'll start with the coverage for your board members. Um, you have a 10 million limit um, for public officials liability 
and that's combined with your um, employment practices liability. Um, and there is a $2,500 deductible. It covers um, wrongful acts uh, committed while you're performing your duties as commissioners. Um, and it covers defense costs for, for claims um, that your board, uh, for your board in the performance of your duties. Um, so uh, there's a, there are exclusions um, and the com most common one that I can think of is uh, like a deliberate violation of a statute, um, but it's, it's very good coverage. Um, that, that's, that's, that's not really, I think we were looking for details and no, understand specifically what the exclusions are. Um, oh, oh, well there's- Because we saw a summary and, and there were questions. I don't have the summary to oh. hand uh, this minute, but- um, I, I have the policy and I have a bunch of questions. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were going to get want to get into the 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 weeds. Yeah, yeah. We can we can all we can all read the the information that was provided to us. Yeah. It's a question that that we don't fully. We're not sure that we understand all of it. Um, okay. Well, um, I'll probably have to take your questions and then um, okay. get answers for them because I I didn't know that you wanted um, an in depth um, discussion on your exclusions. Uh, for your public officials liability. I would suggest then that we table this discussion to another date and maybe what okay. we can do is is all of us can can look at the information that we have and we can put together questions, send them to Mike and then those questions can be sent to you ahead of time so that we can. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I apologize. I didn't, I, I didn't know that you wanted like, um, you know, in depth, uh, in an in depth discussion of, of particularly just your POL coverage. Right, like extended reporting period, for example. Mm -hmm. So okay. Vicki, are, are you the right person on your team to give us that that in the weeds information or is it somebody else? Um, I would probably include Fred Sadink on okay. that. Yep. Yeah, yep. Um, but, but perhaps the best thing to do is, is to put stuff, you know, to get our questions. It may not cover the everything because sometimes yeah. there are knock-ons when you hear an answer, but. yeah. Um, that um, we can get those to you in advance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does that work for everybody that we just um, get our questions to, to Mike and that, and that you can then get a consolidated set of questions? That okay. would be perfect because um, I, I couldn't begin to tell you what all those exclusions are without, have, without reviewing them beforehand. Um, so that would definitely work. Yeah, that would be that would be that would be great. Okay, so um, your next meeting, I guess, it is the third Monday in November. Okay, all right. So, Thank you so much for. You're welcome. I'm sorry I can't help you like right now, that's, but uh, that's that's, so that's Vicky, okay. Vicky, can you yes. commit to having you and or Frank uh, at our next meeting? Absolutely. Okay, so I'll, yes. we'll make sure to get you on for next month. Yep, definitely. All right. Thank you. All very righty. Much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. the The next item on the agenda is, um, sorry, uh, is the um, late payments um, related to COVID. Jess, Jessica is yours. Okay. Um, so we did. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that we did receive our second check from the state on payments. So, so far we've received $14,806 when it comes to this VCAT program. Um, that has, we've had so far 36 customers apply. And I had four more, just I checked right before the board meeting. There are four more sitting in there for waiting for me to check tomorrow. <clears throat> So, so that's out of the total number of customers who might qualify? Yes. And, yep, and, yep. and what's that total number? Uh, that would be, if you're looking at the, the paperwork that I gave you, that would be people in the 60 and 90 day section. Okay. 30 days are excluded. 
And did and and so does it and just to clarify, because this question came up before, the 90 days includes the 60 days. No. Two different pots of people. Two different pots. I mean, I mean, I mean this the six the sixty the other way around. The sixty no. No, that's right. I said it right the first time. No. Yep. Separate sets. So the 60 days is 60 to 89 days, and the 90 days is 90 plus, and the 30 is 30 to 59? Correct. It's broken up by dollar amount. So however many is 90 days from 90 until the end of time, there's 109,000 out there. Wow. And that's almost 700 accounts, a little over 700. Those two columns, 60 and 90? Yep. Correct. Wow. 700 out of 4,000, that's a hell of a number. <laughs> yeah, there was a huge jump from August to September this month, this yeah. time. And how, how late are they? How? Well, not for the 90 days. I'm sorry, what was that? It wasn't a big jump for the 90 days. No, that went down. From August to September, there was um, from 95 to 109,000. But fewer customers. Right. Yeah, our 30 days. This is the, in September. You see that our 30 days past due. That's where our jump was in September. That oh wow so yeah. Less people are paying on time now. Um. Okay. So the the charts that you had after the um, revenue sales budget to actual. And there were two charts that had VCAP allocations. Well, I, I didn't understand those and what the difference was between the two of them. Hold on just a second. Uh, so those, the, Mike, those were the ones that came from. This is VEPSA data, yeah. So remember yeah, I had committed to get you guys information of us compared uh, to the other VEPSA members. This first sheet is just the Hardwick sheet. I see. And then this second one is the combined all members. But I can print off all 12 of the sheets for each 12 of us, but I figured I'd start with one. No, that's, 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 that's okay, but, but this is already out of date because Jessica said that there are 36 customers who've applied and this says 16. Right, we report this to, we report our data to VEPSA when Jess, so that Melissa can file. Uh, she, um, it's I'm not early. sure if she gets, she can actually see what we, uh, what we've verified and approved on the program, um, but uh, she hasn't asked for it recently. Right, so I, that's what I was getting at. I bet she's at least two weeks behind us. So right, you're so right. These numbers aren't really relevant. Okay. So these weren't provided to give you a comparison to the information Jess did. This was just to show you where we are in relation to VEPSA and what was happening at VEPSA. Or, or at least two weeks ago where that was. Yes, yes. Um, did people have any questions about um, the, the the numbers? I, I would like to discuss the, the PUC order in connection with this um, because I think uh, my understanding is is that the VCAP uh, funds have to be applied, that there's several things that have happened. The commission lifted the moratorium as, as Mike noted in his report. The VCAP funds have to be applied for by the end of November and that the cap, the $55,000 cap was lifted. Correct. Um, 
so that in theory, all of our customers who qualify, there should be enough money for them if they get their applications in to get the coverage, which means that we get the whole covered. Um, also, um, they've also gave, given us the okay to reevaluate each of the the past applications that we've received because their thir current thirty day current and thirty days could now be sixty days overdue, so they could get money for that as well. Okay, and are are we finding that any people are applying who aren't qualified? Uh, no, uh, just, uh, I, I think I've, um, uh, two, I think is what I did. And, and the qualification really is just being 60 days past due. Right. That's it. Yep. Yep. Nothing else. Yep. Nothing but else. The only two that I, that I rejected, they were, we were billing them as residential customers mm -hmm. and they were going for the non-residential commercial money. So that's why they were rejected. But that's just, that was just a classification error. That's the kind of thing that could be fixed by just applying in the right slot. Yes. They you just need to reapply. Yes. Is is there an issue? Is there an issue with getting people to to apply? Well, uh, actually, we're finding that um, we're when people call in to pay their electric bills, we're telling them to apply before they pay their electric bill. You know, if they've got a past due balance. We're telling them to go apply and then give us a call once they get, once they figure out what, what they get approved for. And what? Looks, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Vince. Go ahead. I was going to say, it looks like in your report, Mike, that there's some phone outreach that's the additional phone outreach for, I don't know, maybe uh, the larger accounts or uh, the most overdue people. Well, so, actually, Lynn uh, cracked the egg on some stuff on Front Porch Forum and Jess approached me today about having a call campaign tomorrow to all customers uh, who have arrearages to, and the purpose of the call will be specifically to inform them of this plan, uh, the, the program. It won't be because the customer is in the arrears. It will be a call simply to inform any and all customers that this money is out there and available. Uh. So it's going to be calling all customers, not just customers in arrears? The call will be, hey, we are calling all customers, but we're only going to be calling the customers in the arrears. Yes. Oh. Got it. But I don't um, want people to feel like we are targeting them because they're in the arrears, because we're not. We're just trying to help them get some free money. Well, I, the, related, the related issue to this is the commission lifting the moratorium. Um, and which I think is something that we need to be discussing in connection with this because um, GMP, for example, has decided even though they're not obliged to, you know, to not disconnect, that was too many negatives. Um, they have decided that they're not going to disconnect anybody till the spring. Um, I don't know if any of you anyone else has read the commission's order, but I thought what was interesting in it is the concern that if they kept the mandatory ban in place, that it would just, it would allow people to dig a bigger hole for themselves, people who are having trouble paying, um, and that it was better to end the moratorium but have payment plans. Um, one of the things that I wondered in reading that, whether we could in communicating to customers who will it, well, first of all, we, I think we need to make a decision as to whether or not we want to do disconnections, despite the fact that the ban has been lifted. Um, and, and if we do, whether uh, when I say want to do, I don't mean that we want to do disconnections, but that we would in 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 cases where it was where it was otherwise permitted and 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 necessary. Whether we wanted to somehow use the 
information that that is being lifted to encourage people to apply for the VCAP money. Or to even distinguish that if someone's applied for the VCAP money, um, that, um, well, I, I don't even know that we need to do that. I, I'm gonna stop that thought. But people have the option if they can enter a payment plan and, um, was unclear to me, Mike. Did the did the did the order require a twelve month payment plan, or it gives us the discretion as to how long a payment plan? No, it's twelve. We're allowed to go uh, under the existing rules, not any of these special rules, and not anything having to do with COVID. Uh, we are. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but we normally do up to 12 month payment plans under the, no the, the under the special rules for the COVID appropriations. We're supposed to be willing to go an extra 12 months, so 24 months of payments. So, and and we don't need to charge interest on that. Is also is my understanding. Um, yeah, <laughs> we have to figure out how we're gonna how that's gonna land because our software in the customer information system automatically does that. So we got to figure out a way around that if we're not going to charge the 1% or how we're going to handle that. We haven't figured that out. We charge 1% what, a month? What is it, Jess? Yeah, it's 1% overdue interest a month. Is that is that each month? So that's 12% yes. a year? Yes. That's and that's, by that's, the way, that's, that's unconscionably high in this. Well, but this it's also it's also pretty standard. People, organizations haven't really throttled that up and down, so it's a boilerplate that that a, yeah. it, it's reflective of an, a different time and a different interest rates prevailing. But it is pretty darn common. Yeah, it's. it's, it's, it's the no, I agree that it's. I agree that it's common. But again, as as a as a municipal utility. It seems to me that in, I suspect that that rate went into in place when interest rates were much higher than what they are yeah. now. And we could, it's, it's kind of taking us on a sidetrack, but we could evaluate what our highest borrowing cost is. What that is, if we needed to borrow another $100,000, <laughs> what would the interest rate be on that borrowing? And that could possibly be a substitute. It can't be any lower than that, or it's no. Then we're not covering well, it's our not cost. An interest, yeah. Lynn, this is Brooke. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Twelve percent is the statutory rate in Vermont, um, and while there are time frames when the rate exceeds that, or you know, as much less, the legislature tends not to change that. Um, so over time, the stability of knowing that that's um, Beyond that, you can argue that it's usury, but 12% is very, has been the standard in Vermont for a long time. Again, I, I think in a, in a different situation, it, uh, the, it, it made some sense. Um, it makes less sense now. And from my reading of, of the PUC order, it's not clear to me that we're obliged to charge that. There was certainly discussion in the order that some utilities were not going to charge fees in their payment plans. Well, I think you all as the commissioners can tell us whether we're going to or not. For right, the, for well, that's why I'm raising this because yeah. I, I think that, that, that that's a decision that we should be making. Um, my own view is, is that in exigent circumstances like this, not as a permanent thing, um, and, and again, this is why I, I thought, you know, if someone is applying for the, the VLCT money, and there's the, not the VLC, the VCAP money, <laughs> too many Vs. Um, if someone's doing everything that they can be doing and they're out of work and right. they're out of unemployment benefits and they can't pay, but they're setting up a payment plan and they're meeting their obligations under that, and we're charging a rate that covers our costs. Um, although query, we have cash in the bank where we're earning zip, which would argue that uh, you know we're not we're not investing that um, at any kind of a, of a of a rate. So I just think one percent a month is it, if we don't waive it altogether, 
for at least a period of time. You know, maybe it's that we waive it for six months or we waive it through to June or something, you know, for the balance of this fiscal year. But um, I, what are other, what? Well, what, what you know, why can't, then why can't you just say it's zero interest as long as you maintain your payments? But if you stop maintaining your payments, then the interest is retroactive and gets added to your bill. That's, that's, that's one way of doing it. That's a great idea, Michael. Yeah. And do we know of the people who are in arrears, how many are really in trouble or are they just taking advantage of the system? Is there any way to know about that? Um, hold on just a second. Um, well, we know the comparison against years past, so it's a much higher number mm -hmm. than in years past. Mm -hmm. So we, we, again, we don't know why, but we know that we can see that difference. And I, I, would, right. I would say that logic would suggest that that difference is the number of people who are really, really the struggling group. Um, the number that we have all the time that we carry month after month, those are gonna be the frequent flyers I like to uses and yeah that's what you mean yeah but some of them may be in trouble now in ways that they weren't before as that's well that's true yeah well mike didn't you give me data to give to the select board last week that said we were eighty seven thousand dollars more than in arrears than last year yeah as i recall that's what i gave you yeah well uh, any other idea i mean you know, i like michael's idea that uh yeah let's do uh, it the, the, the uh, as you can say the I mean, the interest rate isn't, it isn't just a recoup cost. It's also to provide a disincentive for non-payment. Right. So what Michael is saying is great. I mean, it, it allows for the circumstances and then continues to provide that, you know, I, I don't like to say threat, but you know, the, uh, if somebody doesn't pay, then it can be reimposed. The disincentive. Are you for, are you for, for questions just for the office. Um, okay, so we will take a certain dollar amount. Okay, at this point, you guys tell us that this is gonna be covered by COVID and this is what they can make an arrangement on. Is that, I mean, are we just gonna say, okay, okay from October 15th, everything before that's gonna be considered as COVID? Okay, as or we- Or are we gonna- as first, first of all, as we're coming up and people are getting to the point where we would be sending a disconnection notice. Then in, yeah, which is in, today. In that notice, okay, right now a disconnection notice says you either have to pay or you have to set up a payment plan or you have to um, or, you can disconnect. Or, 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 or you file a complaint, you know, if you've got some issue, you file a complaint with the commission. And if we don't, if you don't do one of these things by X date, we're going to disconnect you. Correct. Okay. And I think that doesn't change. We may want to change some of the wording. We may want to be more encouraging about setting up a payment plan and include information about that in the notice. That's I don't know how difficult that is in terms of the forms that we already have and changing them. The, but if the somebody, worry, the, the, sorry, the worry bell that's ringing in my head, Lynn, is that there's very stringent and very detailed rules that we have to follow uh, under the disconnect rule and uh, waiving it, waiving the interest uh, collected is absolutely something we can do. Um, how we say. If you don't do this, then the interest comes back. I think that that gets into some shaky ground. Um, so I just, whatever you decide, I, I'm going to have to run it through the gambit with Eli, et cetera, and make sure we're not breaking some. Why, why do you think that that's a problem, Mike? Um, well, I know I, I go to war with Cappy, the Consumer Affairs Division. How often, Jessica? Once a month? Yeah, roughly. And do you and it's all about the rules. Well, in this sentence, it has the word and that means, so I, it's- Where are these rules? 
Uh, I can forward you a copy. It's, I'm sure it's on the public uh, Department of Public Service website under CAPI, the CAPI division. <laughs> so your concern is that we may, it, we can waive it entirely. Yeah. We can set it at a different level that's yeah, less than the one percent. Yeah. But you're concerned that we can't waive it. Conditionally. At, and then, well, it's, it wouldn't be retroactive. It would be that the interest would apply going forward if, if, if they don't meet the, pay, the repayment obligations. Maybe you don't even say it, say that part. Uh, it, it can continue to be, it can continue to be a charge that at the end of the payment plan will be- No, waived. no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that, that. Oh, no, no, no. No, I mean, personally, Vince, I think that that's, that's, that, that's the kind of thing that in rules that I've seen would, it, and it leaves a balloon at the end. It, it's, Jess, not, it's not good communication yeah, 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 with your that's customers. True. Jess, can you speak to how the, the interest, I mean, we've talked about this a couple of times now, you and I, can you just explain that to the board, how that works in the SEDC system? Okay, yeah. Um, so what, what it is, is uh, we run our disconnects monthly and it automatically, the system, if we put in that we want it to charge 1%, the system automatically charges 1% on everything over 30 days old, everything. So we've been looking at how to have it not charge the interest rate, which is, that's just as easy. We take the percentage out. But to pick and choose, you know, what we would charge interest over to interest on, um, yeah, it would. We wouldn't be able to say that these dollars we're not they're they're not we're not charging over to interest on, but these current 30 day ones that are now um, 30 days we want to charge over to interest. We can't do that. When when somebody goes on a payment plan. Do they need to be current on their current bill in addition to paying the arrearage? Yes. They do require them to stay current with their current bill, yeah. And the, or if they don't, then they are no longer on their arrangement. Then, they're, then they've blown the plan. Okay. Right. So if so if somebody let's say somebody owes twelve hundred dollars. I'm, I'm just trying to keep numbers that that will work. Okay. So they so their, their arrearage is $1,200. They're gonna be on a 12 month plan. So that's $100 a month. How does the interest normally come into play with that? Uh, depending on what their, you know, their current charges are, it would be charged on all of it. Anything past 30 days past due. So, so, so let, let's just, let's just say, okay, their, their, their payment plan is hundred dollars a month to cover the arrearage. And let's say that their, that their current bill is $50 a month. Mm -hmm. So, so their bill is a hundred. So, so the principal, if you will, is $150. Yep. Right. Okay. And they still owe $1,100 because Correct. it's only covering one, okay. How much interest are they getting hit with in that month for the hundred? As of right now, unless there's another way that I am not aware of with SCDC, they are getting charged the overdue interest on all eleven, all $1,200. No, 1100 No, it'd be 11 because they made a payment. Yeah, uh, the 1100 yeah. so. So they're getting charged, on, on, so, so their bill would be $161 for that month. So that's what we're proposing. Michael is proposing that we eliminate that somehow, and you're that, not sure how we can do it on the computer system. That we. Well, I think we can do it, but if you if you guys tell us we want you to not charge interest for uh, since COVID started through the end of 2020, that works for us. We can make that work, but if we put in these twists and turns of you do this, we're gonna do that. It gets real complicated, and when we might get ourselves in hot water with the rules. Well, let's let's say let's and say with the programming of SEDC. Right. It's a 
But with the interest, it's a, either you charge it or you don't charge it. If you guys want to pick and choose, you know, put put different um, specifications on it, then that's programming, and that would probably be a couple months out for them to be able to set up the programming to be able and to charge expensive. the interest the way we want. So we're still why, looking at the end of the year. Why okay. can't you put in 0% now and just let it be that way until sometime we stop and change it, like March or April? Well, somebody's, if somebody's entering a payment plan, they have to know what their obligations are under the plan. They, I don't think we can say it's no interest and then impose interest. Right. Um, but I guess my question though is, okay, if, 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 we, if we're trying to figure out a way to implement the approach that, that Michael was suggesting, which my sense is that we all at least like the idea of it, it seemed to be where things were going. We haven't voted on a motion. Um, if someone is on a payment plan, okay, and then they don't pay the full amount of their current bill and the payment amount, what happens at that point? Or can we disconnect them at that point? Then they go back into the schedule for disconnection, yep. They go back into the schedule for disconnection so they get another 30 day notice right. or whatever yeah. it is. Oh, good. The notice, it starts over again. Yep. So this, this amount of past due here, does it include interest on this table? This hundred and. No, just, all, just the, uh, the, the, the interest is in a different bundle. Okay. So if, if, How complicated would, so if, if someone had, so then if they go into another disconnection thing, then they're gonna go on to a new payment plan or get disconnected. Well, at that point, they would, the rules say they have to pay, uh, we can mandate that they pay at least half of their bill to get reconnected. Then they could enter a new payment plan. But okay, they, that's don't to just, get, they can't just that's enter to get, another well, payment But what plan. if they haven't been disconnected? In other words, okay, so they, they didn't pay they didn't pay the, the 150 when it was broken due. arrangement. That's what it's called. Okay. And what hap what happens then? Go ahead, Jess. <laughs> it goes back in so for if, connection. Okay, if okay. So when it came to the arrangement, the the payment and this is where where it comes where it becomes difficult because when the system sees it doesn't matter if there's a payment arrangement or a pay uh, you know a current bill the system applies to the oldest amount so if they paid fifty dollars of that hundred of that hundred and fifty that's due it's going to take care of part of the arrangement leave the second half of the arrangement and their current bill is overdue. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the way we apply it? That's the way the system applies it. Why? Why? That's just how, how SCDC has programmed, is their programs or payments are always taking care of the oldest amount no, so that, that there SCDC isn't the overdue is interest applied and, you know. Can we say, just make it 0% for four months we can do that. That's easy. So the, I mean, the motivation for well, the two things. Let One me th Can I just can I just go where I was going with my question? Um, if someone's going to be disconnected at that point, because it, because they've they've broken their arrangement, they have to pay half the bill. If they then go on a new arrangement for the balance, could we, in other words, can we have some customers who- Are you saying disconnected? Well, this is what I was trying to understand. Have they been disconnected or they paid their 50% so they didn't get disconnected? If they pay half their bill, they do not get disconnected. Okay, but they're still gonna need another payment plan for the- On the rest. On the rest. So either way, if there's a broken arrangement 
and then there's a new arrangement. Could we say, you know, your first arrangement, you stick with it, there's no interest. But if you break it, and then you come back to us and we've got to do a new arrangement, there's going to be interest that applies. The usual interest will apply. That's not going to work because we can only do one or the other, correct, Jess? In the way the system is programmed now, yes, we can just do one or the other. So we those are, the, oh, sorry. And it isn't a, this isn't a Hardwick Electric system. This is our customer information system providers. That's the way their system works. So if we want to change it, it's a programming change in their software that we have to pay for. It's a custom change. And then it would be a custom change to go back to normal business if and when you decide we're going to go back to normal, not COVID stuff. And unless the custom change basically allows you to do one or the other. It isn't, it doesn't obligate you to a specific thing. You know, I, the custom change is a menu of options rather than the no, one or the other. not a menu of options. The billing process processes 4,400 bills and we're not going to go in one at a time and say, oh, you get this and you don't get that. And that, no, no, I, I, I understand, yeah. but you know, I mean, you, you can, you can assign a certain value to a certain feel or anyway, it doesn't, those, those are just details. Um, okay. So, I, so I, it, my, the question was that it was a software limitation. Yeah. I, do, do folks understand the new commissioners understand that, that the software that we use is provided by a company that provides the same software for Across the same the type of software. What? Across the country to yeah. utilities, yeah. And and it's a is is it licensed or it's owned? We are their customer, and we use their software system, and they support they support us and are doing so. Right, but I mean, is it a licensed uh, software? Is it, is it a monthly payment or is it a? Yeah, it's a monthly payment. payment. Okay, so it's a licensed software. So it's set up like a uh, their primary customer target uh, events are cooperatives. So it's set up in a cooperative business model. So yeah. we all pay in based on your customer count. You pay X pennies per customer for their services. Yeah. Let me make a suggestion here so, it, so we can uh, at least give ourselves the feeling that we're making some progress. Um, what can we agree on? I think, Lynn, we can agree that moving from a 12 month to a 24 month payment plan is appropriate in these circumstances. So, and that's a very meaningful, that has frankly a lot of impact on the payment plan amount and the doability for most people. Cause it basically, I would imagine cuts it in half or yep. a lot. So is that an easy one that we, we, and we can just put this, we're not voting on it yet. Just say, does anyone disagree with that? I think the only negative to that is the interest payment is going to be a bigger percentage of their monthly payment because they're paying less money. So the person who is paying $100 a month is now paying 50 and $12 goes to interest, not only paying $38, it'll take them forever. I mean, is there a way to tell people if we will not charge, we'll delete all the old interest as long as you commit to a payment plan going forward and eliminate all the interest they owed. At some point you wanna charge them interest if they don't do the payment plan, but I don't know if that's a software problem or just, uh, again, I may have two different rates of people not paying interest and people paying interest if they didn't keep up. But, you know, to pay the interest on a small payment plan every month is just a killer. So if, why, how about this for you all? If we, if you decide that we waive all interest through 2020, waive all interest in 2020. Yeah. And if you make a payment arrangement in 2020, that arrangement will be interest free so that gives everybody who's in arrears right now till the end of the year to make an arrangement but after the first of the year our interest will go back into effect so as long as you stay with your plan that you signed up for today or tomorrow or the next day by the end of the year you'll get that benefit and you can spread it out over 24 months instead of the normal 12. I thought you were and saying that we couldn't have some payment plans with 
interest and some without interest. Right. I'm saying we charge no interest for this year and we turn it back on as of the first of the year. So you're talking but, about. Uh, but, but on a payment plan that somebody entered into this year? Correct. Okay. I don't, I think we're talking yeah. about hardly anything this year. So that's, that's, that's ice in the winter time. Um, it's really not much of anything. Okay, I'm just brainstorming here with you. Yeah, no, I, I know, I'm not being, I'm just trying to, I, I think what, what Roger suggested going 24 months is a meaningful reduction in the amount. The other piece is the interest. And I think Michael's point is, is that people will be paying a lot more interest. But I think we can all agree that our borrowing rate is way less than one percent a month so we can cut the interest rate so i think we could cut the interest rate my sense is we could probably cut the interest rate down to something in the range of three percent a year um but i i think that you know if mike mike can check with union bank and and see what we're looking at i mean what was the last rate on on the last loan that we took out yeah i think it was on the newest bucket truck and it was like 1.9 percent yeah correct me if yeah. i'm wrong jess it was no like, yeah i agree it was like 1.9 1.8 something i that's 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 my recollection of the kind of rate and rates have gone down since then not so so what what i what i think i'm hearing is that if we extend the term and we reduce the interest rate let's just say to three percent now you're you're really helping people. You're helping people with both the time and as Mike appropriately said, you know, we're not digging that help, we're not causing them to dig a hole with interest. And it doesn't not, um, it, oh sorry. So that's that that those sound like two good levers. The issue, of course, is the bad actors who are 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 not, you know, if you assume that a certain portion of the uh, total 308,000 that is past due you know, is bad actors who are using the system to their benefit. Only half, less than half of that is people legitimately put under stress by COVID-19. We just have to recognize that we're, you know, we're removing a disincentive and perhaps thereby creating some incentive for, for people to That's be less real. diligent in paying their electric. Thing. And yeah. how again, much of a disincentive is it? I'm sorry, Mike, Vince, say again? I was going to say, how much of a disincentive, like in your experience, is having a higher interest rate? I mean, how, how much having, is having a higher, higher interest rate actually a disincentive for people that, that are yeah, not and payers? I, that's a great question. And, and because, because the, the real incentive is to, to not be disconnected, really. Right. I mean, the truth is that's what everybody probably, probably calculates is because unlike other other debts you have that they don't usually come with a disconnect risk. Uh, I guess it comes with a repossession on some loans, but so maybe that's, that's it, you know? And, and so you just do those two things, 24 months and 3%. Yeah. Uh, they're having extending it for the, having a lower interest rate, it, it makes it more palatable extending it for the full term of the payment plan. And then you don't have to make any software changes either. Yeah, and I would I would recommend that you um, you you make it open ended, and that's a, until further notice. Not, not everyone knows yeah. we none of us know how long COVID nineteen is going to last. So rather than saying through the end of twenty twenty, just just make it until further notice. Um, and and uh, and that's. That's legit. That takes Jessica out of the frying pan in terms of trying to come up with conditionality and right. different treatments. And, well, and, and, and it also means that if, if you know, the interest rates suddenly, I, it doesn't seem likely, but if they skyrocket, went up substantially, we can, mm -hmm. we can raise the rate so that we're not penalizing yep. other customers. I would recommend stating, and Brooke, you're listening, I hope, I would recommend, and a lot of people have done things temporarily because of COVID-19, I'd recommend saying we are, um, you know, given the circumstance of COVID-19, we're extending 24 months and we're temporarily 
um, reducing the interest rate from 12% to three. And temporarily means um, that you're keeping that option to, as you just said, Lynn. Yeah, uh, and I, for, but I for like any like reason. The, until further notice, you know, temporarily yeah. until further notice. It's a bit of belt and braces, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, and are we sure, Jessica, we can do this? We can. Change. Couldn't hear you, Nat. Oh, well, faded away. You can. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Jessica, you can do these two things, right? You can go from twelve months to twenty-four, and you can put in what would be 025 percent per month. We get, but that would be charged on all back balances, everything. Well, Going as forward, there's another incentive. Going forward, so when you got when you guys tell me that as of January first, no, you I want us to charge a rate of. I think we're more likely to tell you as of November first. Oh. Yeah. Can we do it November first? Point two five percent. Yep, yep. But that will be on everything. I mean, there we. That's where we we can't pick and choose. <laughs> Right, right, so. but it's still draw. It's still dropping it, which is what the commissioners want to do. So, yep, yep, we can. Yeah, that's not a problem. And the twelve now, months to and just the to be months, just to be clear, pay. theoretically, now you're giving your what what the decision we just made is about thirty thousand dollars a year of less interest. Is that interest yeah. that's actually collected? Well, that's why I said theoretically. You're right. <laughs> I don't know how what our annual bad debt write-off is, but you probably subtract that. It's on the books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can Can I suggest, Roger, that you make a motion? So I I move to, uh, in recognition of COVID nineteen impact, temporarily extend our payment plan duration from twelve months to twenty four months, and. Uh, decrease our interest charged on overdue balances from an annual rate of 12% to an annual rate of 3%. Both, both being temporary measures. You want to write as 3% or as 0.25 per month? I'd express it on an annual basis so, uh, okay. because I think that's the way we were talking about it, but I agree that's the arithmetic. Okay. And just so, just to clarify one other, so right now we do standardly under the existing rule payment plans up to 24 months but we're going to extend that uh pardon me up to 12 months but that piece of the rule will be extended to up to 24 months or 24 months what are you telling up me? to yeah i was saying up to but okay. i'm assuming it i'm assuming you will offer yes you're not telling you're not discriminating no, 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 no. Yeah. But a lot of times people will will throw out something else that, and it works for us and we'll just say yes, but we, you know, right. be flexible. In the interest of- I think everyone should know, don't make it, you know, only the clever people get- Oh, no, 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 not at all. No, it, not at all. Okay. Is there, you have, you is there a second to the motion? Or do we, hold on. I mean, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have to be super careful about that yearly charge of 3%? and say that it will be charged monthly or do you not worry about that? It's understood that it will be charged monthly. Well, how's it expressed today? I, I would just stick with the current. How do you communicate it, Jessica, on the bills today? Uh, that it, it just happens monthly, yeah. No, I'm does not it sure say, it does it it say it's 1% a month or does yeah. it say it's 12% a year? Uh, it says 1% a month. Then, then that, as usual, and that's right. We should we should say temporarily reduced from one percent a month to 025 percent a month. Because otherwise, well, somebody I change my motion <laughs> accordingly. Okay. Because otherwise, somebody could claim I don't pay any interest yeah. until the end of the year. Right. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Can I just add one thing. Is there any opportunity to eliminate all interest up through November first, all past interest? And tell people we've eliminated all the past interest and going forward, quarter of a percent per month on a payment plan. We have not charged overdue interest since March. What's that again, Jeff? We have not charged what? We have not charged any overdue interest since March. There you go, Mike. Okay, so we're already. 
<laughs> done already. That's good. Actually, that's very good. Yeah. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing nope. none, all those in favor? Aye. Signify Aye. very opposed. Motion carries. We said November 1, right? November 1. Okay. So going back to the agenda, does anybody ha and else have anything on the COVID report or just in the related disconnections? Okay. I think we should, Lynn, I think you'd do it anyway, but I think um, the disconnections, I don't, I, I think that should become very visible to all commissioners of how that is being conducted and how it is going. And we need a higher than usual visibility, I propose, Lynn, because these are special times and we've got more than usual. And it'll give us the opportunity to perhaps um, consider other actions. Because if we're, if we're doing a large number of disconnects and causing a lot of angst in the community, we should probably know about it sooner or yeah, later. I, I think that's a good point. I think, um, first of all, I think there should be some information going out to customers. Well, I, I wanna go back to the, the, the VCAP thing. Um, I sent Mike what Stowe Electric had put in Stowe's front porch forum. Um, and, I can, and I think we should be putting something very similar in the front porch forums for all of our service that cover all of our service territory because we're not just in one town um, and to encourage customers it's another way of encouraging customers um, and I guess one question that I had on that is do people apply online or is there an application that they have to get and they bring it in how does how does that process work this is for the for the VCAP. Are you there, Jess? Or you want me to do it? Oh, she <laughs> disconnected herself. So it's an online app. She's getting on. It's an online okay. application, Lynn, that gets filtered through CAPI uh, at the department, comes to Jessica, and Jessica actually has to approve for us. Okay. But it's a it's an online application. Okay. Do we have customers who don't have the capability to do an online application, either because they don't have a computer or they they're just you know it they have they're trouble doing an online application? Is there another process? I'm not sure, but I would say there are certainly people who don't have the ability to do an online application at home. Yeah, I would agree with can, that. Will, can, can, will can your you staff do it? Yeah. Sure, okay. we can do it. Yeah. Um, it would, and may, that's something we should add to our call effort tomorrow. And and maybe if it's not in the in the front porch forum piece, um, maybe add something in there that you know if 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 people need assistance with doing an online application, yeah, they can come to the office and we'll do it for them. I think you need to put a rider on the invoice because people who can't do an online application probably don't read front porch forum because they have no computer. Right. So I would do a hard so, copy. You no, know, that's a good point. That's a good oh, point. But people yeah. may have problem. May, people may be able to read email and not be able to do an online application right. too. Right. So yeah, and but, one of the I, one of the things from that great blue study is that our customers want stuff. They want a bill stuffer. They want a piece of paper information from us. Yeah. Clearly, that's what they want. So, yeah. Well, the, yeah, we, 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 we haven't gotten to that yet. That appears to be what they want. They, uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting what was in there, but we'll come to that. Mail, mail. Um, the, um, so, that was one question that I had. So, if, um, you know, maybe this thing we can get in the Hardwick Gazette. Yeah, the press release. Um, and uh, with with VCAP information as well as as this new policy that we're instituting, um, you know that that's something that we need to communicate to people, um, and as well as maybe putting a bill insert in 
if, and I don't know if people have other ideas on that, but but we should we need to be communicating that because um, it's really real shame for people not to get the VCAP money. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, so are you back? I, yes. I am back. I'm sorry. <laughs> the phone just disconnected. <laughs> Um, I had um, asked Mike, you know, in the discussion, uh, again, related to uh, the, select, the select board meeting um, and how we were doing to, for the rate comparison. And so that was in the, in the minutes, uh, not in the minutes, in the board packet. And um, we seem to be for very small customers kind of in the middle and otherwise towards the higher end, but not the highest. Certainly much lower than the people or the entities that would be looking to purchase us. Yeah, I think that's a good point. So uh, I just had a question about these are, so these are typical bills. I mean, what, how was, I don't have the FEPS uh, methodology, so. Under 400 kW. So right. for 400, it's, take, it's taking the, it's billing out 400 kilowatt hours. No, I, I, I understand that, but you know, are, are the, it says typical bill. So would this typical bill have nighttime rate, uh, daytime we, rate? No, we don't have those. We don't have those. We have okay. a single residential rate. Right. Okay, so That's when it right. says typical bill, is this an average bill? Is this a median no. bill? No, it's a bill for 400 kilowatt hours. Right. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, okay, I got it. Okay. Or it's a bill for two hundred kilowatt hours, or for eight hundred kilowatt hours. Got those it. were, those were the examples that were there. It's for for Vince to go buy two hundred kilowatt hours of energy from each of these utilities, that's what it would cost. So, okay, and these these are residential. This is a residential. Yeah, residential. Bill. Okay, and this is this is every one of these utilities has a uniform residential rate. No. No. They don't. Okay. If they did. They'd all be the same price, right? No, no, that's not, that's not what Vince is asking. No. He's asking, do some of them have time of day rates? Do some of them have no. have have different kinds of rates? Okay. I don't some, believe Stowe, any of them. For example, Stowe for large residential customers has a demand charge. We don't have. I'm okay. going to assume I, 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 it doesn't kick in at 400 kilowatt hours and it probably doesn't kick in at 800 kilowatt hours. How um, about the, uh, the discounted first 100 kilowatt hours? Price. That's in there. That would be That's in there. All built in. Yeah. Is to everyone? Is, is that uniform? If, they, ha if no. they have that in their rate, then it's there. If they don't, if they have a declining so block, Vince, or that an could distinguish. Block. You know, that could make it, that probably changes our ranking as you go up to, right. to different levels. What? And, and okay. the, the, the levels are different for every utility, or are they all the same? No, no. Every utility has its own rates. It has its no, own. No, I, I, I understand that. It has its it, own rate structure. Let, let me. Okay. You asked the question, let me answer it. They have their own rate structure. So some have, a, most everybody has a customer charge, which is X amount per month. And that will be different for each utility. And then they will have maybe a flat rate per kilowatt hour or a rate structure that's a declining block where it starts higher and it goes down or it may be an inverted block where it starts lower and it goes up. All right, my, my question was rhetorical. I, 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 I realized that. So the, while these numbers are indicative, uh, you can actually pick sets. Uh, uh, you can pick say 250 kilowatt hours may give you a different result. Uh, you know, but th this is indicative, but uh, I, I would say it's not, um, it's not, uh, inc it's not completely conclusive. Well, I'd argue that it's conclusive for those different levels. It's just, would you like to see one at a thousand kilowatt hours or 1200? But I think there's enough of a, a, um, yeah. a set there to show you here's a low, someone who's very low end and here's someone who's mid range and here's someone who's fairly high. And then you got to go to Roger and look at a higher one, <laughs> unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. So, but I think it is conclusive at those points. Yeah. We're 
And and our average customer is around what five six hundred kilowatt hours a month. Yeah, five hundred, I would say. Yeah. So. Orleans and Morrisville are a bit lower than us, but. Well, some of yeah, some of the uh, caveats of those lower utilities, lower rates. For example, you mentioned Orleans. So Orleans serves only the village of Orleans. So I believe they have uh, 600 customers or less and Ethan Allen Manufacturing. So they have one huge customer. The rest of it really doesn't matter, <laughs> to be honest with you. And not a lot of line. Yeah, right. the cost structure is a lot different. So we have, you know, 70, over 70% 70 residential customers spread out all over the place. So we really aren't a, something that can be compared to Orleans. So the EC and Swanton also, uh, Swanton generates over 90% of their own power with their Highgate Falls hydro facility. So that's how they keep their rates so slow. So several of the ones that are the less or the least expensive, there's good logical reasons right. how they're able to do that. Yeah. So VEC and Washington Electric are the two, obviously the ones nearest <laughs> us and they're a hair higher. Well, at, at no, the more than hair. Bill, they're <laughs> quite a bit higher than us. Yeah. NGM yeah, I didn't even higher. I didn't even compare Washington Electric on the top end because they're they're just way out there. Yeah, I mean, for a large customer, it's it's massively different. Yeah. Um, I was surprised it, though to see that uh, Green Mountain Power was so high. Well, if the yeah, uh, given these numbers, this is a good argument for uh, municipal municipal utility. Yeah, it's one good argument, definitely. I think. Well, we don't know if we don't know if Hardwick Electric Select Board, in asking that question, you know, had some sort of idea or information or worry, but. Well, they they got this packet too. I sent it to them, so they have these documents to to chew on good so i i would just say that 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 was the combination of the the survey information and the rate rankings you know where the rates stack up was a very it was was a a superb answer to the question and i was an enthusiastic supporter of asking the question i think it's our job on behalf of the rate payers to always yeah. be asking it and i love the way when you provided the information is you, you owned up to we can do a whole lot better job communicating and that's what we should focus on and it's not just our instincts it's not just some anecdotal remarks it's it's clear here and let's get after it and uh, so i'm sad i'm i'm amazed that we had you know in the wings that information to answer it that quickly but i'm i'm I think we got kind of what we need and maybe the select board or others will come back to us and say, let's look deeper into this area or that one. Well, right, that's what I hope it spurs is you, your, all of your interest to say, hey, Mike, look at this piece of data, let's dig into this a little more. Or if the yeah. select board says, hey, let's look at that one a little more. Yeah, I, I would be hesitant to put too much emphasis on this study. I think there's a lot we don't know. I'm gonna put my statistician's hat on uh, for, for a minute. Um, we don't know how they got their customer list, how they picked, how they selected customers, whether they were just calling people with landlines, whether they, you know, how, did we provide a, a, a list of customers? How did they know? We gave them a customer listing and they ran through their science of how they were gonna pick customers. And, and I have a suggestion, Lynn, cause that's a, that's a valid concern. Almost everyone in the world of surveying has a methodology paid page. Um, and I'm maybe what that would be a next step is to get for all of us, but starting with you, get them to provide their methodology page. That would, that I'm, I'm would be bet, helpful. I'm gonna bet that I have that, Roger. Sure. Because I had, I mean, it was hundreds of pages that I had to chop through to get our stuff sure. out. So there's probably one in there. I'll take another look. 
it's yeah. is the, was the composite mic a composite of of all of the utilities the vepsa members all vepsa yeah okay. i mean i i to be honest i mean i i went through this and there's some interesting stuff in here but i i had questions about the methodology and i had questions about some of the like the income data of the people who responded I haven't I didn't have a chance to look and see how that matches up actually with income data for our service territory. My 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 gut sense looking at it is that um it 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 it's it's off that it was it was getting more affluent people than well, that that was that's another question about the 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 sample size is small. Yeah. 27. I mean it's not, you know, I mean normally you need a thousand thousand for a, a reasonably good statistical sample. No, 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 we had 400, we had 4,400 right, customers. Let, let me finish one. And so 100, 177, uh, um, and is it a self-selecting group? The people that tend to answer and uh, the people that would answer would tend to answer positively or they may have some, you know, very bad experience, but that's much more unlikely. So, but but so I'm agreeing with you, Len. That you yeah. Know, that, I, again, we, that's why we need to see their methodology. I I. Well, let me I, let I, me dig that up, and uh, we can certainly invite them to join us for a meeting and have them walk us through their data. They'd be glad to right. do that. They were they were a pretty good team that presented to Vepsa. Yeah. I, no, I'm not. I'm not faulting them. I'm just saying that that, for example, the income it. data jumped out at me, and and I haven't had a chance to compare it. But that's something that one can compare. Um, the, there's a, a the three-fifths indicating municipal ownership was important, which is great. Uh, um, was there any indication? Was there any follow? It didn't seem to be any follow-up of why they thought it was important. Mm -hmm. So see, that's what I'm saying. Maybe there there's follow-up questions that we'd like them to run a run another study on and maybe target 500 customers or something. I, I don't know. But it, this is a starting point for us to have sure. those discussions. And uh, no, the other, like the net metering, um, it showed, at least from the respondents, a, a really high percentage of people had net metering, meaning they had installations. Was that accurate? I mean, yeah, we, we have more than we have more per capita in our rate in our customer base than any utility in the state. Oh wow! Car. Well, I ho ho hope to get hope to get ours in yeah. next month. <laughs> Anyway, um, I agree. Now. I, I think it would be good if we, Mike, if you could, if you could send that methodology around. I don't know if anybody wants to see it besides me, but uh, there's, yeah. uh, just send it to everybody. And if people don't want to look at it, they don't have to. Um, and I think we could have an interesting discussion about some of this in a bit more detail, maybe at the next meeting when we've had a chance to really look at this. Yeah. Uh, do people want someone to come in from Great Blue or? That'd be great. I mean, yeah, I'd like it. So why, why don't we see if they can maybe come next okay. month or or December if we've got somebody coming on the insurance, which may go. Yeah, that a might while. go for a while. Yeah, yeah Fred, the, Fred is the guy that I've dealt with at the league on our insurance stuff. He's really good. You, you'll get a lot of info out of him. Um. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the manager's report, which we were kind of talking about. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that? Always good. Okay. There are no other questions. Um, I'll just. I'll just share a little uh, tidbit on the H11 for all of you. Um, we cleared the right of way down to the project and we've built the power line down to the staging area. And apparently unbeknownst to Hardwick Electric, Encore had committed us to only cutting X amount of right of way, which wouldn't have amounted to half of the right of way we needed. So 
when others went down there to inspect the work, the site work that was going on, they blew a gasket about the right of way we cut because it was in excess of what they had proposed to the ANR and had approved uh, for cutting down into the project. So I had to meet with ANR and all the attorneys today down there and argue about what was cut and why it wasn't or what it was. And we all agreed that, um, and HED did what they would normally do, what we had to do. It was a miscommunication between Encore and ANR, and what they're going to do or what they intend to do is reduce the clearing of theirs, of Encore's, on the site uh, by the amount that we cut that they didn't plan for, which I immediately said, well, what's that going to do to the generation? And they said that their engineers had run all the calcs on it with the reduced tree clearing and it was it was almost no change so i think that's that's how it's all going to sugar out but in case that somebody asks you a question that's what was going on right away it looks great it does look great i'm pretty pumped yeah that's what that's what all the the dust or whatever or smoke that was coming up yeah they've you? been piling all the trees and burning them down there. Yeah. The trees are now all gone. It's just gravel. <laughs> it's an Amazon those, rainforest. Those trees that they're burning are down on the site, not on the right of way. That's correct. And they're all little, you know, six foot tall scrub trees just trying yeah. to grow in sand. Yeah. Okay, which takes us to the new business, Vince. Uh, you wanted to talk about um, Mike's email or the email that he forwarded from uh, Eli? Yeah, but I, would, I would defer to you. You're right, that was, uh, you know, it was just, that, that was a basically a select board uh, issue. But I mean, I did, I did disagree with um, the second part, be, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't need to use up time discussing it. it it's not, not, okay. it, it's not relevant at this point. Okay. Uh, the other email that uh, that I had mentioned was the email on the audit. Um, I hope everybody saw that, and um, I think that much as I think we were inclined to try and cooperate with the select board if we could. Uh, in terms of the timing of the audit, the answer is that we cannot, um, that, that we're bound by state law uh, to a calendar fiscal year. Yep. Um, and um, that the uh, exception in the audit report really shouldn't cause any material problems. And I would, I would add to that, that the select board, of course, has the option, if they strongly disagree, if it's costing the town a huge amount of money, it's, it's punitive to the town, they have the option of, of pushing us to do what Stowe does, which is wasteful. And, you know, that, that puts a dollar, you know, it puts a rough dollar figure around if you really need two sets of numbers to satisfy your requirements, uh, you know, you'd need to pay for it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think the town would have to pay for it. Not, Absolutely, not, not, our, not ratepayers. our ratepayers. I don't think there's any reason why the ratepayers should have to pay for it. Um, and and, and I suppose it's a, third, it's a third option, which it, possibly a third option, which or a second option, which is that the town change its fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, nobody's, really come up with any uh any functional implications you know for the town right it was and more it, like just atmospherics it, nobody was able to quantify and if the, if you can have a qualifier right after that uh this you know the this adverse opinion or whatever it whatever it's called is because uh, data is available because it's a t separate fiscal year not because not indicated by any you know whatever any bad accounting methods or it's, it's state law. Anyhow, I, I think we should, uh, Mike should just communicate that to, okay. to, to Eric, let Eric and, and Sean know and they can deal with it. 
So do, do you want it. me to uh, pass along Jeff's <coughs> general message that it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be a sure a concern. Okay. Can I, does anyone think of any reason why that sh message shouldn't be conveyed? Okay. Um, is there any other business, any other new business? If not, um, oh, do you want to approve the minutes uh, that that were? Well, no, we're, we're still. I've had a chance. We've all had. We've all had them now for couple hours did, did did you get the ones that the revised ones yep. that i sent out yep okay uh well we need to take them separately um so the minutes from uh <laughs> september 21st is there a motion to approve Make motion motion to approve those minutes. minutes second second any objections Hearing none, the September 21st minutes are approved. And uh, for the October 12th minutes, um, the revised minutes that uh, were circulated, is there a motion to approve? I think Nat wanted to make that motion. Mike, Michael, did you make a motion? Yes, to approve those minutes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Nat, have you frozen? I think he's frozen. Either that, he's very still. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So I'm clear. Uh, you modified, or you, yeah, you modified some minutes, Lynn. Yeah, oh, there was one thing, though, in them, actually, that needed discussion in the, I sent out, and I, and I, sent, I sent them to you. I did it as a reply yeah, to your email. I'm sorry? I probably just haven't seen them yet. Okay. One was a typo. One was, um, I think you had said that that uh, I had suggested that, that the select board members participate in our meetings. And I think I suggested that they attend our meetings. Um, yeah, you did. Um, so Twice, I changed, actually. Right, so <laughs> I, cha I changed that. Uh, okay. And that, but there was one spot where you had some question marks and my comment was either we, we need to either fill that in with what's supposed to be there or the sentence needs to be fixed to reflect what we do know. Okay. So I guess we can't really, um, thinking about it, we should not be approving those minutes until that's- Yeah, let's fixed. hold off on those. I know what you're talking about because I was, Somebody started talking to me up here and I lost my train of thought and the video was playing and I just put some question marks in. So, yeah. I need All right. To so let's, let's, I let's put, let, I, I suggest, um, would you withdraw your motion, Michael? Yes, I'll withdraw it. Okay. Um, and that we uh, take those up at the next month, next meeting. But once you make that change, Mike, they could be posted as draft on the, on the website. Yep. Okay, um, and um, so the next subject is video. And Leif, you're still with us? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, I, I, so have we been broadcasting live or is this, you're no. recording it? Recording for broadcast. Okay. So you do video as well, even though it's Zoom. Um, right. We're capturing the video from the Zoom. So, Leaf, why don't you tell uh, my board how you how the process works with the select board? How you do their meetings? Okay. Well, with the. It's been all over the place with this COVID thing because we've gone to Zoom and then we've gone back to in-person meetings. Um, but traditionally we go and record meetings um, with a camera. And then, and then it, it, with the Hardwick meeting, we do go live. Um, that's the only meeting. Well, actually we're doing Woodbury live now too. Um, 
but for a school board meeting or your, your meeting, typically we, we record, then we rebroadcast um, later. And we also put it up on our website and our Facebook page. We, we capture the complete meeting, um, you know, minus any executive session, of course. But So this works then, what we're doing now. Should be it fun. works. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to give you a heads up that I'd gotten inquiries about recording your meetings and broadcasting them. So uh, that's one thing. Um, so we're doing that. Um, as far as the process of it, um, right now I'm just recording off the screen of a second computer. It's one way to do it. Um, for the Hardwick meetings, I was actually working with them to um, kind of moderate the Zoom meetings. And that was, you know, when everybody was scrambling and trying to figure out how to do everything. So I accelerated that learning process and tried to help out with that board and also with the Woodbury board. And I offered to help the school boards as well. Um, so I was, I'm actually, when we do Zoom meetings with the municipalities, um, I'm actually running the meeting with the board uh, and I'm recording directly. Um, tonight, whoever, I, I assume it's Mike who's running this meeting, right? Yeah. Um, you could give me permission to record. Um, that would give me a more direct recording. Recording off the screen works okay too. Um, uh, another way to do it would be to just record it yourself as you're probably doing anyway, I see you're doing it. Yeah. Um, and you could take that recording and you could uh, just put it on a server for me to grab. All I do with it is uh, put titles on it for broadcast. So I'll put you know a title at the beginning and at the end and lower third so that the cable watchers can know what they're watching. So and is there a fun it. is there a function on here that I should have turned on so you can record? Right. Um, you could make oh, me oh. a co-host and okay, yeah. and and I think you might have to go into your preferences on Zoom and just uh, make sure that you that co-hosts are allowed to record. Yeah. Okay, that's easy. So if you want to do that, that'd be fine. If you want to just record and then drop the file in a server that I can access, I could download the file and then put the titles I need to put on it. Um, so, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy to join your meeting and record it in whatever way you want. But if you want to make it really easy for me, you can just record it and and drop a file somewhere and give me access to that file to download. Perfect. Yeah, uh, Mike, are, are you are you uh, is this uh, are you capturing a lot? I mean, are you downloading a local recording or are you saving to the cloud? No, but, right now it's saving to this computer. Okay. Right. So you would have to upload that file to you know whatever your drive, your Google Drive or what have you. You can let me know what you'd like to do. Um, that that's just to help me. Otherwise, uh, I just request to know about the meeting and um, to know that there's an agenda, you know, and if it isn't on your website, I would like to see one before. We're very excited to have the board meetings publicly available. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> So do you do you have drop? I mean, is is it, it? Do you have a preference, Leaf, as to whether it's Dropbox or or Google Drive or? Uh, no, they all work. Mike? Yeah. So. Whatever, yeah. whatever you're comfortable with, Mike. I think and you you and Mike work it out. Do you have a preference? The one, the one thing I would su suggest, uh, Mike, is that uh, just scrolling through the uh, the file to the end. Um, just to make sure the executive session uh, was wasn't on there. 
And because I, I know the little red button, so it'll 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 be off when we go into executive session. Right, right. It should be, but you know, I, I found just from experience that you know it's it's easy. You just pull that cursor, pull the uh, cursor over, or pull the uh, you know the timeline indicator over, just right to the end to see if it's on there. But as host, he can get rid of everybody else anyway, including. Right. This is just a just a. a uh, agreed. It's being careful. Completely it's being agreed. Careful. It's just a, it's just a fail safe. And it's, you know, I mean, it's not like the end of the world, but it, it is, it was, it would be something that I would do as an editor, for example. Yeah. Okay. So if, if that works for you, Leif, then, then future meetings, we can do it that way and you don't have to sit here for two hours. Is that what you'd like to do? We really need an audience, though, so I think no. we don't want to let them off too easy. No, no, leave. <laughs> yeah, if you just tell me the the easiest way for you, leave. I'll I'll do that. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. Great. Shoot me, shoot me an email with what you want, and I'll make it happen. Okay. Great. great. Anything else you need from me? I don't think so. Unless. All right. Vince, is, Vince is, is, is the commissioner with the most video experience. So I, uh, did you have anything else, Vince? No, I mean, it seems really straight straightforward. Uh, other than maybe a file being corrupted, you know, in the download. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I haven't, like, have, do you have any experience with that, Leif? I mean. Yeah, I've run into it before. I, I, I go through pains to do a backup every yeah. time. And, but that's just, that's just because, you know that's what we do. So, I, I usually record on two two devices. But redundancy, you know. Yeah. Because I have had, um, I've had instances of corrupt files. You get an interruption. It just it drops addresses. Yep. It can. But, well, one way around that, if, if, if you would rather not be sitting in on the meetings would be for one of the commissioners, it could even be a rotating thing uh, to yeah. co-host and then record on their computer as well. I, I suggest that. That's a great suggestion. Um, yeah, if, if Mike does the primary and, and assigns uh, one of you to do, to do the secondary recording, uh, then you have a backup and we're all set. Cool. Vince, are yeah. you willing to, to, to do that? Sure. Yeah. No. Uh, put in some music. No. <laughs> Make background. it good. White House background, background design. Well, just re just remember, folks, um, that the, we're talking about a public record, and while redundancy is a good idea, certainly. I'm not a fan of individuals doing the recording at their home. I know we're under COVID and all of that, but um, there, are, there are good reasons to have one recording and one official uh, version, which, um, you know, I, I guess I'm not really understanding what the problem is in terms of trying to transfer the information that might get corrupted. Or are you talking about the original recording becoming corrupted? Talking about the original recording getting corrupted. That has happened to me. Could, could Brooke, it, that's, that's, I, I appreciate your suggestion. I understand where it's exactly where it's coming from. Could we have a policy that once it's confirmed that the original recording isn't corrupted, that the other one is destroyed? That's probably a good idea. And, and it sounds like Vince has um, experience in this area. If he's willing to do that redundancy as a regular job, as opposed to it sort of rotating, I think that that might uh, introduce more consistency if he's capable of <laughs> volunteering for that or. Yeah, well, you know, one thing you could do, it's, uh, I don't know what the, you can either save it on their server or, down, or download it. You don't get a choice of, of both. Uh, my, when I first thought about it, I thought, well, we just do both and then you can check the file and, but you can either do one or the other. So I don't know whether one's generally more, I mean, this is a fa fairly rare event. I mean, uh, you know, it's happened to Leif. It, it, uh, it just hasn't happened to me for any types of 
file downloads or well no that's not true it has happened to, sometimes but um uh was my question have it on have it on their server download it from there and it still remains on the server and then check you know you can check the one that's downloaded and then you know you can eliminate uh, the other one um so just a just a question so how would a second copy differ from someone copying the file off of the, uh, you know, off of the uh, Hardwick Electric's, I mean, not Hardwick Electric, HCTV's uh, broadcast? Well, what I'm getting at is uh, sort of the chain of evidence kind of notion that there the first of all the requirement of um, municipalities is to post their minutes the minutes are the official record of what transpires at a meeting and what action is taken uh, under covid because we've had to go to remote and we're in a state of emergency the video recording zoom platform was authorized for open meetings I believe that the recordings are required to be kept for one year as a public record. Um, and they need to be, I don't know the specifics about it because I'm not a computer person, but w the statute was uh, signed into law by the governor. And so there's an obligation to download or retain that information in a certain uh, media storage reliable place. And such that if a uh, FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request uh, is made to the town that says, I wanna see a recording of, or a copy of your recording of your meeting, you are required to keep that for the, for years time, I believe it is at this point. So, so what's the So it's important that there is a recording, one thing that is the thing. Now, you know better than I, what can be done in terms of manipulation of videos, not that anyone has too much interest in trying to do that in, you know, us in little Vermont, but it just goes to the notion of there's one version, one copy that is official that needs to be preserved and uh, the custodian is the Hardwick Electric Department and they need to be um, in possession of that record so that it can be produced if there's a request. So I, I, I completely agree, but you know the the it's a document, and you know it's a pub, it would be a public document, and backups are made of of every valuable public document. Uh, you know the state doesn't have one copy; they have backups. And you, see, you see what I'm saying? I mean, uh, well, you're, you're talking to a lawyer who who has to live by rules like court rules that say there's one recording. If you go to a deposition, you can take a tape recorder with you, but it's not an official version. And so what right. I'm getting at is I want to avoid multiple copies so that somebody calls up a, a board member, commission member and says, hey, can you send me a copy of that thing? And because electronic documents, recordings, et cetera, are easy to email or send. And so there needs to be the official custody surrounding this process. Now, I understand what you're saying about creating other copies or versions, and those need to be copies and versions of what was actually recorded, not copies and versions of a different recording that may come in at a different time. It may miss the first couple people. It may, uh, you know, disrupt. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I completely understand. I'm talking about a duplicate, a backup yeah, du yeah. duplicate. But, so you but have... no, 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 but the th I think you're missing the distinction that Brooke is drawing. If you have a document, a printed document, and you go and you make a Xerox of it, it's going to be, assuming that the copier is working, it's going to be an identical document. It's a copy of the original. But if Mike is recording and you're recording, you may not start your recording at exactly the same time that Mike starts his recording. Or maybe your signal goes at, at a time and it interrupts your recording. Um, it, 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 it's, not, it's not a copy of Mike's Right, recording. okay, okay, we're talking about, okay, yeah. And, and, I, what, and so, what Brooke, so what Brooke is saying is that we need to have one recording that is the official recording. And in the ordinary course, that should be Mike's recording. 
and which is why I made the suggestion that if we have as a map, ordinarily you can't go around destroying things, but we have to keep, but if, if we're saying that the recording that Vince makes is a backup to be used only in the event that Mike's recording is corrupted. I, I beg to differ because um, of the open meeting law. Um, as I understand it, anybody from the public can come in and record Sure. Am I they wrong can, about that? But it's not. But it's not the official, official recording right. of the meeting. I, okay. I, I get that. I get the distinction. I was assuming that the recordings would be synchronous and that they would, would be identical. They can't be synchronous. I mean, you guys are in different places. Look, look. You know, one of the things that we have to grapple with is that this is new technology. Maybe not. Maybe some of us know more about it than others, but. Um, and the question becomes, what do you as a municipality have to do in terms of following the law? And while this may sound overly technical that there is one recording that needs to be the official recording, if you want to have a fail safe that gets destroyed after Mike verifies when he uploads it into the permanent, at least year long retaining place that it's kept safe. Um, but because it's this kind of um, technology that can be altered very easily, um, there has to be one thing that can be asked for as the official record from the town. And so that's all we're trying to do is just, it's important that I make, my job is to say, town, you need to make sure you take care of your records. You wouldn't let somebody else take notes and say, this is what I say the meeting said. Now, I know that this may sound like an absurdity, but we're talking about protecting the content of the information, and that is your job. And you shouldn't be uh, passing that along to someone else or relying on or posting as any kind of official version um, do a document, a recording that has not been in your possession and control. So, Brooke, Brooke, are you are you are you saying that we should not be giving HCTV a copy to post? No, no, no. That's okay. fine because you're giving them the copy that Mike is going to make. So, if they and if they now they're welcome to record their own recording of it if he wants to do that and he can post that. I this isn't about what Leaf is going to put on his um, broadcast. This is about what is your public record. And if you're going to make another copy of it, then just be sure that your original is always your original unless there's a snafu that required the replacement of that sale fail safe version. But I'm not telling Leaf he can't put it on the on his uh, broadcast or anything. That's fine. I, I, I under, completely understand what you're saying. You know, it may overlap. Uh, you know, there may be 10 seconds uh, on my recording that isn't on Mike's or, or on the other end. I mean, that would be the only thing that's different because otherwise this file is this file. And it, it, this is what, what you're seeing is what everyone else is seeing. I mean, or, you know, and, and hearing it, it's not, it, and, and when I was talking about, talking about backup copy, I'm not, that is bit, that is more identical. That's bit for bit, uh, uh, the, ex the identical copy. It would be a copy of the, the official, the official recording. And, and, and we have an obligation to maintain the integrity of that public document in the same way you know, uh, you have a responsibility to maintain, maintain public documents for, for public access. So having a backup, you know, like I said, it's just, it's, uh, I'm kind of rambling, but the, the, in the same way, you, you back up essential data, you back up essential documents, and that's just done in the digital world. And, but you have the official document. I mean, it's, you know, it's. We've never had a problem here, Lynn. I mean, aren't we killing a dead bird? I, I raised this only because Leaf was talking about having had an experience with a corrupt document. My question for Brooke is, are we obliged to record this? Um, under the, yeah, let me, I can go over that with you. Be, because of COVID, um, H, 
681 was the bill that was signed in March, I believe it was, may have been May, let's see. And it re it's specific about open meeting under the circumstances of COVID. And hold on. Okay, public bodies should meet electronically and provide the public with electronic access to meetings in lieu of a designated physical location. And basically what it, what it um, centers on is we can't have people coming in person any longer. So normally you folks can hold your meeting, um, but you have to have somebody like Mike there physically to open the meeting, to actually be there for the public to show up if they wanna hear the meeting and, and attend. So because of the restrictions about physical, we can't come together at this point. Um, the guidance, the, the law says you should be recording these and making them available so that people can still participate in government, see what's going on and be able to do so uh, through electronic means with, tel with telephone strongly encouraged, though it's not actually required. But you didn't think. read recording. That's no, what it I didn't say asking. recording. Yeah. No, and all right, so. So, I mean, because what we do do is we make the link public and we give telephone access to people mm -hmm. who don't have the ability to connect by computer. So there is complete public access. And it's, it sounds um, like- the, the, And so oh. my question, because my question is, before this discussion, we weren't doing a backup. And if the thing got corrupted, were we in violation of the of 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 the law? All right. Let me let me just finish and read you the last two sections. It says, when the public body meets electronically, you shall use technology that permits the attendance through uh, electronic or other means. Shall allow public to access by telephone whenever feasible. Shall post the information about access all over the place. Um, and then it says, unless unusual circumstances make it impossible for them to do so, the legislative body of each municipality and each school board shall record its meetings held pursuant to this section. And uh, later on in the, it indicates that you should be keeping those for one year. Okay, but we're not, so, a, we're not a school board or a legislative body of the municipality. Oh. So the bottom line is the guidance here, and I believe that it applies to all the public bodies. This is the guidance on make, on preserving open meeting access. And so I believe you have the technology and it mandates you to use it. Okay, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that we don't, but what I'm wondering, given the concerns that you've raised about having a second copy and the possibility of manipulation, not accusing anyone, is just to leave it the way we've been doing it, which is Mike records it. And if it turns out that it got corrupted one time, then that month's meeting isn't gonna be on HCTV. And you're off the hook because the language of the statute says, unless there's some unusual circumstance, you have to have a recording of it. And an unusual circumstance is some funky download thing where it doesn't work. And, well, and the, Lee, the, you said now, this, this is rare. Which is very rare. And the, 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 it really it's sounds like on. the statute says we need to provide a public venue. And in this case, it's a virtual venue. And only if you can't provide that virtual venue does the recording need to be made and made publicly available? I mean, that was that last clause that you stated. Only, only if under some circumstances, you're not able to provide public access, in this case, virtual act, to a virtual venue of the meeting, which is what we're doing right now. No, no, it's, it requires the virtual, it requires open meetings. So you're on your platform, you're providing that right now. So you're, you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing. And, it, and then it's basically saying, unless it's unusual circumstances make it impossible, you have to record because you're on a platform where you can. So push the button. That's okay, so the, the impossible is not, it refers to the recording. It, it, sounds, it sounded like it was referring to unless circumstances make it impossible to provide the virtual venue. No, this says unless Lynn. unusual. Lynn, we're, we're, we're close to two hours. I think this issue is over with. We were. I, 
Yeah, I, it, it, so, it sounds to me like we're trying to find a solution for a problem that rarely occurs. Yes. <laughs> that we don't have an obligation, from what I'm understanding from what Brooke is saying, that if, if, if it turns out that we had a corruption issue, we're not going to be in violation. Um, and it's a, and what I understand from LEAF is it's rare. So my suggestion is that Mike keeps recording and he works out with LEAF where the best place to put the recording is so that LEAF can get it and put on whatever he needs to put on for his broadcast. And Mike, you regularly back up your computer anyway, right? Can't hear you, Mike. Oh. Yes, that all gets done automatically. Sorry about that. Okay. Sounds Do, good. I don't even know that we need a motion on this, um, unless yeah. someone thinks that we do. Oh. Okay, any other discussion on this topic? Okay, then I am going to go on to the next item and I'm going to make a motion that we move into executive session to discuss a litigation matter, the premature disclosure of which could prejudice the interests of Hardwick Electric Department. Second. 